First things first, I have to commend this show and how certified of a banger its opening is. Like, I enjoy both the opening and ending songs, but as soon as, like, it kicks in, like, the episode just starts blasting, visually amazing directing, often with anime openings and endings, you know, the directing isn't something that you're gonna come out hyping up the most, it's usually the song because it gets you hyped up or super emotional, super catchy. Honestly, the visuals, it just seems so psychological, like it's trying to mess with your minds, and given that this is all about breaking apart friendships and dynamics, I think the visuals perfectly capture the type of anime that Tomodachi Game is supposed to be, with a song that is just both eerie but also hype at the same time. It's that nice kind of middle ground that just not many shows get right, and honestly, I don't see myself skipping that anytime soon. Though this show, of course, won't be for everyone, because these kind of battle games, whether it's they go full death game, whether it's like in this case, where it's more psychological messing with the minds, they're not going to be for everyone, and that's perfectly acceptable. But for what this show is aiming to be, I think it's doing a great job. Mainly because, like, this is my first rodeo. I've seen plenty of shows with a similar coat of paint. The thing that seemingly is going to make this one different is that people love, who have read the manga that is, love the main character Yuji, saying one of the best main characters they've read, or at the very least have experienced in quite some time, and the idea of how nothing is as it appears to be is something that I think a lot of shows and mangas and light novels aim for, but they never really nail. But seemingly based on the hype of the source material and the quality of the past two episodes, I'm willing to believe it. Because when you break apart the cast, which I'm, it's going to take me a bit to remember all the names, I really can only remember Shiho as well as Yuchi right now. So just forgive me if I refer to people like the guy with the glasses or, you know, the guy who clearly has a thing for the other characters, right? So it's going to take me a bit. I watch a lot of anime and names aren't my best suited thing there. But I think what makes it interesting is when you strip away and pull each of the characters away from this group, every single one of their personalities I've seen in a different show, whether it's anime, a different TV show, and they were the traitor. And I think that's brilliant, because so far in both of these episodes, there's an argument to be made that either one of them is giving signs that they're the traitor. And that's something that I think a lot of these shows fail at, because when you strip it away, right? Okay, someone who's bragging about how much money they have. Now we're in a sort of like battle game where basically you can get a lot of money or you could clear your debt. Very possible, he's lying. Someone who apparently has a thing for someone who she no longer has a thing for, right? You know, Shiho apparently is having a crush on Yuchi, and the idea that they had, like, this fake relationship at one point, you can say that's going to be something. You know, the guy with the glasses, he's very calm, cool, and collected. Actually, the biggest psychopath of them all. The quiet girl who maybe gets a little yandere when the boy she likes doesn't like her back. All of these tropes, hell, even the main character who seemingly is all about keeping friendship afloat, I've seen it where they eventually twist that and he actually was the betrayer. That's what makes, I think, Tomodachi Game so interesting, is that I remember in last week's video, and just taking a look at surrounding opinions on the show, I saw a very small handful of people try to be like, oh, it's so obvious who's the traitor. And what was funny is each of them had a different person they were picking apart as the clear obvious traitor. And that's what makes this show actually so successful, is that they designed each of the main casts as a trope, so to speak, or at the very least, a personality you've probably seen be the betrayer before. But I think for those of us who've seen more than just one or two, we can say, honestly, based on what they've shown us, any one of them could still be the traitor. And I think the main selling point is so far Yuchi being such a captivating protagonist, someone who actually does value his friendships, but when it comes time to push come to shove to screw over people because they're seemingly trying to screw over the little guy, in the case of last week, it was a girl who seemingly was about to get all the debt piled upon her, little did we know that Shiho actually, because of her little outburst, it counted as doubling her, so he actually protected her in the process. And I think with these almost children's game, basically pushing what human emotions can do, sure, Maybe it's not as intense as something where you could literally get your head cut off if you fail, but I think money is one of the biggest corruptors in society. I think most people, when they come into wealth, have very good ideas and noble ideas of what to do. It's easy to say if you were to win a lottery, you'd pay off your friend's mortgage, your mother's mortgage, you'd do all these things. But if a billion dollars fell in your hand, it's very easy to start being corrupted and start buying the yachts and becoming a billionaire piece of shit. And I think that's what's so interesting because for students, the amount of money that the debt is that's currently there, it's not destroying their entire lives. 
But in the moments for these high school students, it actually is the end of the world. And the fact that something that used to be such tight bonds is actually causing them to go completely psycho. And I think that makes it so interesting because the game in this episode, which I thought was brilliant, is almost just like a simple game where you go into a booth, you write down something bad mouthing the other person or one of the people otherwise you know everyone will just move one square if no one writes anything and the fact that the deck keeps getting piled on because at first if you didn't have rules like this everyone could just make it to the finish line and everyone would be going on to the third game but the idea of not only like being able to skip the third game going home basically clearing a bunch of your debt it's just so good because if you are the trader of course you're gonna make what i thought what was gonna happen is they'd get to like the last second or third square and then someone would start badmouthing so they could get a head start. But I love the idea that there's multiple people screwing around because even though you're not the traitor, you know someone is and why should you fall on the sword for someone who doesn't care about you? I know I'm not a bad person, but ultimately, you know, I have to value my own life more than another person's. It's just so good at breaking apart the human consciousness and it's really solid, honestly. I love the presentation. I love the 3D model with this children's character and how silly he is, he'll pop up, and I think in any other show would have a dagger in his hand, but he doesn't have a weapon, he doesn't make you fearful because of some brutal thing, it's because he's a psychological nemesis, and I think that's just so effective. The thing that I thought was pretty clever is how they had special ink on the cards, because our boy tries to stay behind, because if he can read the cards, he knows who was lying, right? Because they all said that, oh, you know, we all have the same amount of debt, right? And I love the idea that as he's trying to read the specifics on the cards, there's certain inks that start to fade. I think it's it kind of blends that it doesn't go so overboard that it becomes supernatural, but it has just enough to be like, oh, that's like a super clever spy movie kind of big brain villain thing. As you have these two girls who are just watching a friendship's break for God knows what reason. I'm going to go on as some experiment. There actually is no debt. I think it's just something here to, you know, examine the human psyche for some reason. But honestly, it's hard to say. Personally, for me, I love this show. Like, so far out of these two episodes, I wouldn't change a thing so far. I think the presentation does exactly what it needs to. The voice actors are going into it. And I think anyone who is firmly convinced they know who the traitor is right now, I think is, like, severely overlooking the fact that in any other show, any one of these characters is literally the traitor trope. And the fact that they're all kind of, like, being presented in a shady light at one point. You know, the quiet girl had a psycho look. The glasses guy seems like he's very much jealous and envious of, you know, so-and-so. The idea of, is his father even rich? You know, you can just start picking apart. The girl who's saying she likes you, you know, that can be a yandere psycho bitch herself, right? There's so many different things, and that's what makes it an interesting show to watch weekly because it gets your mind racing, and especially if you've seen a lot in this genre, whether it's full-on death games or just battle of wits and psychological trauma, I've seen each one of these characters screw around another person in some way, maybe not specifically in the exact way, but their character designs from their personality and visual it does remind me of a lot of different things I've seen, and that's what's great to watch it weekly. I think the only ones who truly know what's going on right now are those who have seen the manga, read it fully, or read enough to know the spoilers, or people who have browsed a wiki, because otherwise this show is crystal clear. Nothing is as it seems, and things are just gonna get crazier. Thoughts if you have any down below, let me know what you're feeling. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new around here. Till next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.